Hi, Dragonflies. Welcome back to Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm Lynn Bauer. In this video, I'd like to share with you the most important tool in my studio. The thing that has helped me the most in developing technical skill and in finding my own creative vision and voice. And that's my studio notebook. When you start out in painting, you hear this advice a lot. Keep a sketchbook. Many experienced artists say that keeping a sketchbook is key to developing your own creative style. But as a beginner, I didn't really understand what they meant by sketchbook. I heard the word sketchbook and I thought this is a place where you practice making sketches, little drawings or paintings that you do on location kind of quickly and without a lot of detail. And that's a great skill to have and one that I did want to develop, but since I didn't want to become primarily a plein air painter, it didn't seem to be very directly related to my broader goals in developing my own creative style. Eventually, I realized that the kind of sketchbook that people were talking about keeping wasn't really the kind of sketchbook I was keeping. So I decided to give myself permission to do other things in my sketchbook besides just making little sketches. Anything that supported my development as an artist. And as a reminder to myself, I stopped calling it my sketchbook and started calling it my studio journal or studio notebook. In this video, I want to share with you a variety of activities that I do in my studio notebook to help you brainstorm how you might want to also broaden your sketchbook practice. Now, I know for beginners, one of the questions is always, well, what kind of sketchbook should I use? So I'm going to start off with some recommendations for some sketchbooks that are suitable for at least a little bit of watercolor in there with whatever else you're doing. And if you already have a sketchbook that you love, you can skip over this and go to this timestamp up here and get right into the activities. First up is the handbook watercolor journal. One of the nice features of this journal and all of the bound journals I'm going to show you is that it lays completely flat. This means I can paint or draw right across the binding, so this gives me a larger work area in a smaller package. Another nice feature of this sketchbook is the little envelope or pocket that's glued in the back. I like this feature, but I don't rule out a sketchbook that doesn't have it because I can easily glue in my own envelope. Another nice feature is a pen loop, but I simply buy stick-on pen loops online or in stationery stores and add them to my journals as needed. Most watercolor sketchbooks, including this one, have more of a student grade paper than the nice 100% cotton paper you might be using in your studio. This helps keep the costs down. Often it's a little bit lighter weight so they can put more pages into the sketchbook. And I find that I don't really mind this for a sketchbook. I don't mind if my washes are a little streaky or the colors aren't exactly the same. If I'm doing color testing, I can glue in some little pieces of my usual watercolor paper, and you'll see an example of that in a moment. Next up is the Stillman & Burn Beta Series. This is the soft cover version. This also comes in a hardcover and a spiral bound version. And this one is one that I like a lot because it takes an ink line really well. All of them are fine for writing in with a pen, but I like this one for drawing. Like the previous one, the paper in this sketchbook is a little more like a student grade paper, so washes tend to be a bit on the streaky side, but I don't mind that. Here's an example of what you can do if they don't come with an envelope taped in the back. I just created one, just glued in my own envelope. Next up is the American Journey sketchbook from Cheap Joe's. And a very similar product, I unfortunately don't have one to show you because the product's changed a little since I bought it last time, is the B Paper watercolor sketchbook. So if you're looking for a spiral bound sketchbook, those are two good options. Again, the paper is a bit more like a student grade paper, doesn't necessarily take the washes as well as your studio paper. So what if you do want something that has 
the nice 100% cotton paper that's going to behave more like what you use in your studio. Well, Cheap Joe's also has a Kilimanjaro sketchbook, so that's similar in the way it's bound and sizes and format to this sketchbook, but it has their 100% cotton professional grade Kilimanjaro paper in it. So those are some options if you like spiral bound. Another possibility, if you want a paper that is going to take a wash a little more like your studio paper, is the Etcher Labs watercolor sketchbook. One of the fun things about this sketchbook series is that you can paint the covers with acrylic and kind of personalize them and make them your own. This paper takes watercolor very much like a regular professional grade um, watercolor paper that you might be using in your studio. So I love it for that. But if you are using a sketchbook that doesn't have a really high quality watercolor paper, maybe it's more like a student grade, you can do what I do and glue in a little postcard to work on or glue in little sections of studies that you've done. And you can also add a page like this by making a hinge. So this is just a piece of masking tape. I've laid that flat and taped the masking tape so that it's part on the paper and part on my sketchbook page. And then I just fold it and crease it to make a little hinge. So I make myself these little flip out pages. There's a limit to how many of these you can jam in there and still have the binding closed, but you can get quite a few in. So that's something you can rely on if you want to buy a, a different type of sketchbook that maybe doesn't take a wash as beautifully as you'd like. You can glue in watercolor paper. You can make these little flip out pages. So there are some recommendations for suitable watercolor sketchbooks to use as a studio notebook if you're a watercolorist. And also a tip for what to do if you're using a sketchbook that has student grade paper and you have some activities that you want to do on the same paper that you normally use for your paintings. Now I want to start the activities by talking about some icebreaker activities because sometimes it's a little hard to get started in your new sketchbook. When you first get a brand new sketchbook like this, especially a watercolor sketchbook, it tends to be kind of a beautiful thing all by itself. It has this wonderful heavy paper. It's usually a little on the expensive side compared to a journal that you might just write in. So you feel a little hesitant. You feel like, I can't put anything on these pages until my work is worthy of this lovely book. And you have to get around that somehow, or you'll never get the benefit of keeping a studio notebook. So here are some ideas for getting around that feeling of, my work isn't worthy to go into this book. The first one is, you don't have to start on page one. You can start anywhere. And often, what I do is start by just playing on a page somewhere in the middle of the book to get an idea of how the watercolor behaves on this journal's pages. Now, you might be thinking, I just wasted four pages of this kind of expensive paper. But I don't think of it as a waste at all because first of all, without any stress about making a picture or doing a nice sketch, I gave myself an opportunity to explore how this paper takes the paint. I will come back and use these pages as the basis. I might come back and develop this further into some kind of painting, or more often what happens is I use these as a place to make notes. I also do that with sketches that I don't finish or don't like. So I had a sketch here that I didn't know what to do in the middle or didn't have time in the middle, and I just use this as a place to make notes. And it doesn't detract from the sketch at all to make notes on top of it. And it's actually much more fun for me to make notes on pages that have already something on them. So I go ahead and use pages like this as places to write journal entries or make notes or brainstorm. So I don't feel as though they're wasted. I feel like they're prepared <laughs> for my notes <laughs> for me to have some fun writing on the page instead of just writing on a blank white page. 
Another thing you can do is make little reference pages for yourself. So here I had set up a new travel palette and I drew a little diagram of the palette and filled in the colors and then I swatched each color. Then I came back on another day and started in between looking at combinations of the colors to see how my various graded washes might look. This is very low stress. I know I can do it. I don't have to do it all at once. And it's a great reference when I'm using this travel palette elsewhere to paint in this sketchbook. I can flip back to this page and look at all the things I can do with these colors. Another great icebreaker activity for a new studio notebook is to test the behavior of a new brush to see if it's going to do what you want it to do or to see what it will do. Another thing that can help you break the ice is to make yourself a little template. You could use cardstock or this is the plastic that's used for making quilt templates or you may be able to just cut some templates out of plastic packaging. And I drew on a page somewhere in my sketchbook a bunch of little windows, and then I filled these little windows over the course of a long period of time. So the idea is not that I have to now fill them all, but whenever I need just a little sketch, I can flip to a page that's already got some windows open and ready for me to just go ahead and start sketching. I don't have to feel like I've got to fill the whole page in the sketchbook. I only have to fill this much. It makes it easier for me to do things like experiment. Over here, I was just doodling in the corners of my sketchbook, and then I decided, well, what if I took those doodle shapes and kind of made a scene out of them? This encourages me to think and play freely in my sketchbook and try stuff that maybe I wouldn't try on a whole page or a big painting. Another way to take the stress out of working in your brand new sketchbook is to remind yourself that if something doesn't turn out, you can always put another piece of watercolor paper on top of it. So here's an example where I just glued in a postcard on top of a sketch that didn't really work out for the technique I was experimenting with. I also use these little templates to divide up the page to organize my notes a little bit and allow me to use more of the paper. And having these templates helps in a couple of ways. First of all, I don't have to fill the whole page. And I also, because I'm not going to fill the entire page, I think more about how big do I want to make this sketch? What makes sense? Instead of just by default making every sketch be the same size as my sketchbook page. I can start a sketch one day and I can add to it later. I give myself permission to finish things as much as I have time for and energy for and come back to them later if I want to or not at all. So these are a few ideas for things you can do to get started working in your studio notebook in maybe a little different way than you've used your sketchbooks in the past. Here's a whirlwind tour of some of the other things that I've done in my studio notebook just to help you start brainstorming how you might like to use yours. You can capture colors in the sky or something else without having to worry about figuring out the rest of the picture. You can record or create patterns or you can just doodle in the margins. You can experiment with wet and wet effects and see how different pigments mingle with each other. You can warm up by drawing or painting whatever is in front of you or outside your window. Try out new pigments and see how they work with the other pigments on your palette. Explore different abstract designs. Or different arrangements of picture elements. Or value patterns for the same set of shapes. You can make lists of business ideas, books to read, impressions of a scene, ideas for painting titles, 
ideas for paintings or series, your goals and intentions. You can plan projects, shows, art fairs, your website, gifts, commissions. You can experiment with new tools or media. Or add opaque media right on top of boring drawings. You can make references of different kinds of mark making, stamping, sponging, saran wrap, spattering, all those great texture techniques. You can just outline the big silhouettes. Or only develop the complicated part. You can always invent trees later. Or you can capture interesting tree shapes. or silhouettes of people in different poses. You can make tiny rest stop sketches and a map of your drive when you're traveling. You can try to build a simple subject with just a few brush strokes. Make visual puns. Try unconventional color schemes. multiple ways of treating the same subject. This is my favorite way to use my studio notebook and probably the one I learned the most from. So I hope this gives you some ideas about how you could use a sketchbook for more than just making sketches and expand your sketchbook practice to support your entire development as an artist and find your own creative style and voice. Give it a try. Hope you have fun with it, and I'll see you next time. Happy painting!